To determine the strength of the linear relationship between two variables, statisticians use a measure called the correlation coefficient. And there are several types of correlation coefficients. But in this video, we will focus on the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, which is named after the famous statistician Carl Pearson. The correlation coefficient computed from the sample data measures the strength and direction of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. We use the symbol R for the sample correlation coefficient. We also use the symbol Greek letter Rho for the population correlation coefficient. The range of the correlation coefficient is from negative 1 to positive 1. If there is a strong positive linear relationship between the variables, the value of R will be close to positive 1. If there is a strong negative linear relationship between the variables, then the value of R will be close to negative 1. And when there is no linear relationship between the variables, or only a weak relationship, the value of R will be close to 0. There are several methods to compute for the correlation coefficient, and one of the methods is to use this formula, where N is the number of data pairs. And to fully understand the meaning of the correlation coefficient R and the process on how to compute this correlation coefficient R, let's take a look at the next slide. Using the formula for the correlation coefficient R, let's compute the value for the data obtained in the study of the number of absences and the final grade of the seven students in the statistics class. By looking at the table, we can see that there are 7 students with their corresponding number of absences X and their corresponding final grade Y. And from this table, to be able to compute for the correlation coefficient R, we also have to include another columns. Column for the XY, column for X squared, and column for Y squared. Since in the formula, we have to get the summation of xy, the summation of x squared, the summation of y squared, so that we can compute fully for the correlation coefficient r. And so we have here the xy column, x squared column, and the y squared column. By completing the xy column, we have to multiply the number of absences x and the final grade y. 7 times 80 is 560. 2 times 88 is 176. 14 times 46 is 644, 9 times 75 is 675, and so on. Just complete the process. Next, for the x squared column, we now have the square of x. So simply, 7 squared is 49, 2 squared is 4, 14 squared is 196, 9 squared is 81. Complete the x squared column. And for the y squared column, we have 80 squared is 6,400, 88 squared is 7,744, 46 squared is 2,116. Completing the table, we now have this. And now, to compute for r, let's compute first the summation of xy, summation of x squared, summation of x, summation of y, and summation of y squared. By simply adding all the values in the x column, 7 plus 2 and so on, we get the summation of x which is 56. By adding all the values in the y column, we get the summation of y which is 516. By adding all the values in the xy column, we get the summation of xy which is 3,739. And by adding all the values uh, in the x squared column, we now have the summation of x squared, which is, which is 554. And for the y squared, summation of y squared, we get 39,616. Now that we have all these values, let's substitute these values to our formula for the correlation coefficient r. By calculating this, we get a value of r, which is negative 0.951. The rounding rule for this is to round the value to three decimal places. And then from here, 
we can say that the value of R suggests a strong negative linear relationship between a student's final grade and the number of absences a student has. That is, the more absences a student has, the lower is his or her grade. And that's it. I hope that you learned something today. Thank you for watching.